Reflecting on God's word, I want to speak tonight on a, on a simple teaching and then a kind of a final exhortation. But first, I want to address this really strange thing called the triduum. What's a triduum? We don't really use that word every day, but yet it's begun tonight. It's a strange word which really means a, like a three-day day. So tonight, tomorrow, and Holy Saturday, or, or Easter Sunday, which is really one day in the church, is one day or one liturgical celebration. So tonight you'll notice that there's no ending to the Mass. We will process behind the Blessed Sacrament as our Lord goes throughout the church, and then we'll leave it here, exposed on the altar until midnight. Then you'll notice tomorrow on Good Friday there's no beginning, and then there's no end. And then on Holy Saturday, if you come to the vigil, which will be long, I promise, you'll notice that there's no beginning, but there will be an ending. After three hours or so, there will be an ending. And then, of course, on each Sunday, there'll be a beginning and an ending. It's the church's way of saying that we've walked into one long mass, which begins tonight and does not conclude until the great triumph of our Lord over sin and death in his resurrection on Holy Saturday night or Easter Sunday. But it's given it's Holy Saturday. What I really want to talk about tonight is the Eucharist. Because it is the Eucharist that's the true point of tonight's celebration. When I was in seminary, a priest gave a talk about the loss of the sacramental vision of reality in the world. Meaning, we, we tend to look at something and think, what I'm seeing is limited to what I'm seeing. That's it. It's just a thing, nothing more. But that's not true. That's never true. Everything we see is always more than what it looks like. You know this from the fact that when you walked into church tonight, you wanted to sit by someone you liked, right? That's why it matters to have someone you love next to you and not just some other body, because it's not sufficient to have a thing next to you. The body isn't just a body. The body discloses the person who is hidden by the body. So all of reality is more than what it looks like. All reality. Pero dado que es el jueves santo, de lo que realmente quiero hablar esta noche es sobre la Eucaristía. Porque la Eucaristía es el verdadero punto de la celebración esta noche. Cuando estaba en el seminario, un sacerdote dio una charla sobre la pérdida de la realidad de la visión sacramental en el mundo. Significa que tendemos a mirar algo y a pensar lo que estoy venido se limita a lo que estoy venido. Eso es todo. Es solo una cosa, no hay nada más. Pero eso no es cierto. Nunca es cierto. Todo lo que vemos es siempre más que lo que parece. Ustedes saben que es desde el momento cuando entraron a la iglesia. Trataron de sentarse con aquellos que quieran, ¿verdad? Es por eso que importa tener alguien que aman a su lado y no solo un otro cuerpo. Porque es el suficiente tener una cosa a su lado. El cuerpo no es un solo cuerpo. El cuerpo describa la persona que está escolto por el cuerpo. Así que toda la realidad es siempre más que lo que parece. Toda la realidad. And oftentimes when you look at surveys in the church, we hear the rather alarming statistics of the lack of faith in the real presence of Jesus. It's something like a third of all Catholics, which should get your attention. We may be among them. Two-thirds of Catholics do not truly believe that Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and the bread and the wine. But they are no longer, in fact, bread and wine. He hides himself behind the appearance of bread and wine. And the reaction of many when we hear these statistics is, wow, we got a problem. We got to teach that. We need to address that. But I don't think that's the problem. It's not that people haven't heard it. They've heard it. They just don't believe it. And they don't believe it because they, they think that everything out there is always 
only what it seems to be. And then suddenly you walk into church and someone dressed like me says some words and poof, bread and wine becomes something else. When in fact, everything we ever see is always more than what we're seeing. And so what happens here on this altar is not unusual. It's just the most intense expression of what's always happening. And so when you look at your husband or your wife or your son or your daughter or your parents or your friend, you're seeing more than a body. You're seeing a person who is revealed by the body. When you see the stars tonight, the scriptures tell us the heavens declare the glory of God. They are stars to be sure, but they are more than just stars. They point to the one who made them. Everything is more than it appears. Cuando en realidad, todo lo que, lo que vemos siempre es más de lo que estamos venido. Y entonces, lo que pasa aquí en este altar no es inusual. Solo es la expresión más intensa de lo que está sucediendo siempre. Cuando miran a su esposo o a su esposa o a sus hijos o sus padres o sus amigos... Están viendo más que un cuerpo. Están viendo a una persona que es revelada por el cuerpo. Cuando ven las estrellas esta noche, las escrituras nos dicen que los eh, cielos declararon la gloria de Dios. Son estrellas, pero son más que solo estrellas. Ellas señalan a quien las hizo Todo es más de lo que parece cuando vemos la realidad. De esa manera, entonces la Eucaristía se convierte en algo así como la clave para entender el resto del mundo y la realidad. Que siempre estoy mirando más de lo que parece ser visto. And when we see reality like that, then the Eucharist becomes something like the key to understand the rest of the world and all of reality. That I'm always looking at more than what it appears to be seen. So when we see each other, we are looking at men and women who are created to be divinized. As C.S. Lewis once remarked, outside of the Eucharist, the holiest thing you will ever see is another man or a woman. Because every man or woman that we see is destined to be divinized and to share in God's own life. So that's the main point to tonight. So what about this exhortation? Well, the question on my mind as we enter into these most sacred days is, what do you, Jesus, want? What are you looking for from me? What do you want me to do? You who have become man, who have lived our life, who have gone to the cross, who has endured the shame and the humiliation and the scourging and the crown of thorns and the spitting and the jeering and the mocking. What do you want? What are you looking for from me? Because clearly he wants me to be more than just an observer. He's looking for you and for me to make decisions. What decisions? Well, in a generic way, he's looking for you to trust him. To surrender. He's looking for your faith. What is he thirsting for? He's thirsting for your love, my love. But there's something deeper than just the, the generic, than just him looking for you to surrender or to trust and to love. And I can't give you that answer, really. That's on you. La pregunta que está es en mi mente, ya que entramos en estos días más sagrados, es. ¿Qué es lo que, que quiere Jesús? ¿Qué está buscando de mí? ¿Qué quiere que haga? Él que se ha convertido en hombre. A, que ha vivido nuestra vida. Que ha ido a la cruz. Que ha soportado la vergüenza, la humillación y las hostes y las cor coronas de espinas, las escupidas y las buras y la ironía. ¿Qué es lo que quiere, que está buscando de mí. Claramente, él quiere que lo que sea más que lo simple es del vedor. Él nos está buscando estudios en mí para que tenemos decisiones. ¿Cuáles decisiones? En general, 
los que buscando para que confíen en Él, que se entreguen. Él está buscando su fe. ¿Por qué Él está sentido? Él es sentido por su amor, por mi amor. Pero hay algo más profundo que lo usual. Lo está buscando para que se entreguen y confíen y amén. Y yo en realidad no puedo de darles estas respuestas. Esto es en ustedes. Después de todos recibimos la comunión y iremos en la procesión con el Santísimo Sacramento por toda la iglesia. Y lo invitamos a todos a que se quieren. Y la Eucaristía estará aquí en el altar hasta la medianoche. Nuestro Señor, al culto bajo de la apariencia del pan y la vino. Él está aquí porque en esta noche después de celebrar la última cena del Señor, el cual estamos al punto de recordar nuevamente en este altar, Jesús le preguntó a sus apóstoles, ¿pueden seguir vigilando conmigo esta noche? Oremos por un corazón compresivo para entender lo que Él nos ha pedido que hagamos, porque el mundo está casado, solitario y despesarado. Y el que están buscando está colgado por encima de nosotros y no le conocerán a menos que los cantemos. I mentioned tonight has no ending. After we receive communion, we will process with the Blessed Sacrament throughout the church. And we invite you all to stay. And the Eucharist will be here on the altar, our Lord hidden under the appearance of bread. He's here because on the night after celebrating the Lord's Supper, which we are about to make present on this altar again, Jesus asked his apostles, can you keep watch with me tonight? So whether you can stay or whether you can go home or maybe go home, put the kids to bed and then come back, I beg you to do our best to commit to tonight to keep watch. Keep watch by praying with the passion to read any of the four gospels prayerfully, slowly, lingeringly. The account of all that Jesus did for you and for me. Again, the Eucharist will be here until Midnight. And as we read the scriptures, ask the question, Lord, what do you want from me? What are you asking me to do? What is your word to me tonight? So let's pray for each other tonight. Let's pray for our whole parish and not just those who come. Let's pray for those who are not here tonight and haven't been in a long time or perhaps never have. For those who will be here on Sunday, let's pray for the Lord to give them and to us ears to hear his voice, eyes to look like never before at what he's done for us out of his unimaginable love. Let's pray for an understanding heart to understand what he's asking us to do because the world out there is bored. It's lonely and it's despairing. And the one they are looking for is hanging above us on a cross and they will not know him unless we tell them. 